Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and the big news in the world of rocket science is that United Launch Alliance have chosen the BE-4 engine for their Vulcan rocket. They've rejected the AR-1 engine that was in development from Aerojet Rocketdyne, and instead they've gone with a completely new fuel technology, the methane oxygen cycle. And they aren't the only people switching over to use methane and liquid oxygen because SpaceX's Raptor engine also uses methane. And you'll notice that I'm actually pronouncing it methane like Americans do because I guess I live here and I want to avoid confusing people. But yeah, the BE-4 engine is a, a fuel, an oxygen-rich staged combustion cycle and it generates about 2.4 meganewtons of thrust. The Raptor is a more ambitious engine. It has a much more complex fuel cycle. Instead of a single turbo pump setup, they have two pre-burners, one which is fuel rich and one which is oxygen rich. And then those mix in the main combustion chamber. And the whole thing generates about 1.7 uh, meganewton, so lower thrust, but it's supposedly higher efficiency because of this uh, fuel cycle. Now, RP-1, is what is currently used by SpaceX for their Falcon 9 and by ULA for the Atlas V. In fact, at the RP-1, or kerosene, has a very long history as a rocket fuel. If you go back to the earliest days, the Atlas and the Thor, they were both using kerosene and liquid oxygen. The first stages of the Saturn I and the Saturn V, those use RP-1. RP-1 is essentially a, a, a specification for how to take regular jet fuel and kerosene and make it a very high grade version that is suitable for rockets. And it's obviously quite a detailed specification. Now the reason why RP-1 was used was that, well the earliest rockets used ethanol, which was nice because it could be watered down and also you could really water it down and drink it, but to get higher performance they wanted to use uh, something that was better and RP-1 or kerosene came up as an obvious example at, since they had existing suppliers who could then be could make this better quality version they didn't have existing suppliers for for methane for highly refined methane so they you know they used went with the jet fuel and then when they needed to go to even higher specific impulses they had hydrogen which offered a very clear advantage whereas methane didn't so much so that's why they didn't do it in the past. So why are they doing it now? Why does methane offer interesting advantages? Well, okay, so let's, let's actually talk specifically. Methane is the simplest hydrocarbon. It is a carbon atom with four hydrogens around the outside. RP1 is actually a collection of a whole lot of different carbon molecules. Uh, it's typically represented as a, a kind of, you know, me the median type is 12 carbons with 24 hydrogens along the side but you know it could be a single chain or it could actually be a branching chain it could have like 10 carbons it could have 14 carbons there's a whole range and mixture of molecules in this it's actually much easier to refine methane down to the very simple molecule so because of this when it's burned it has less partial your know, combustion products that can form into polymers. So first of all, that makes designing the engine a little easier because you don't have to worry with coking happening in the wrong area, setting down deposits of carbon, which might gum up your engines or your injectors or any other stuff. Secondly, because it has all those hydrogens, it has more hydrogen, but compared to other, uh, you know, other more complex hydrocarbons, so uh, the exhaust products tend to be lighter. It produces twice as much water compared to carbon dioxide for, uh, compared to other materials. So therefore the exhaust products are lighter and that gives you a slightly higher specific impulse. On the other hand, it is actually slightly less energetic. So the exhaust isn't as hot, which means that, yeah, because the exhaust is, isn't as hot, the specific impulse is lower, but because the exhaust products are lighter it ends up getting an advantage in specific impulse but you know if you're reusing your engine having cooler combustion chambers, cha uh, temperatures can only be considered a win but i think the real win here is that you can pressurize the tanks using the same gas that the tanks are containing in liquid form this is called autogenous pressurization and as you're burning the fuel you can heat some of it up in the engine 
and pass that back in to keep the, the tank pressures up. Now, in the Falcon 9 and the Atlas V, what you do is you use helium for this because helium is light, but if you can eliminate that, it eliminates like another extra piece of complexity. So this saves complexity, saves mass, and uh, yeah, so that's an obvious upside. Now there is a downside, and the downside is that methane is about half as dense as RP1. Uh, so you're talking something like 800 kilograms per cubic meter for RP1 versus about 400 for, for methane. And that you would immediately think, well, the tanks would have to be twice as big. But you also have to remember that you're burning this in a fuel oxygen mixture. And the oxidizer really is should be considered part of the average density. So when you combine the fuel and the oxidizer requirements for each design, it's actually only about a 20% 20 20 advantage versus 50% advantage. So, yeah, it's not as good, but it's pretty good. It, it's quite acceptable, I guess, 20% rather than, say, helium, or sorry, hydrogen, which is really bad. Anyway, that's all great. Yes, sure, it is cryogenic, but actually cryogenic turns out to be kind of advantageous because it means more coolant and you can use this autogenous pressurization. So, you know, the extra complexity turns out to be a win in the end. There is another side of this, is that Elon Musk is obviously very interested in Mars. And back in the 90s, there was an idea called Mars Direct. This was championed by Robert Zubrin. It was a plan for a human Mars mission. And a big part of this was that instead of shipping all the fuel to leave Mars to Mars, you would actually only ship up a small amount of hydrogen, about eight tons, and you would ship a fuel production plant that would take carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere and using the Sabatier process, you'd combine this with the hydrogen and you would get methane and liquid oxygen. So you could get about 100 tons of propellant and oxidizer out of, you know, eight tons of hydrogen, which was very nice. It would be enough to get you back into space. Uh, the idea, of course, was that you would send your spacecraft out to manufacture the fuel you know, years before and you would only then send the people along when you were 100% sure that you had the fuel and oxidizer set up and ready to go. This is actually the, uh, the mission profile that they use in the Martian, if you remember. But the whole fuel production on Mars thing is a distant future kind of thing. The real advantages of methane are here and now in terms of being burning cleaner, being able to burn cooler, and being able to get slightly higher performance out of the whole thing. And that is why everybody is switching over to it. But I'm going to say it's not the only, uh, they're not the only alternative that's being championed right now. Vector Space Systems has just got a patent for a pressure-fed rocket engine that instead of using methane or uh, RP-1, it's going to use uh, propylene or propene. That is essentially three carbon atoms with six hydrogen atoms on the side. There's a double bond in one of the carbons there. And uh, that's interesting. It's going to burn hotter. It's actually going to burn even hotter than RP-1. So it has more energy and that actually helps it get slightly better performance than the RP-1 because the ch carbon chain is shorter. There's less, you know, partial combustion products to deal with. So again, less chance of... Um, of this coking going on. But yes, congratulations to Blue Origin and of course to Jeff Bezos, the founder. I mean, it's uh, really cool to see a new company come in with a new technology and actually become part of this big uh, establishment, let's say. Uh, yes, congratulations to you all. I hope to see the Vulcan flying in, in the coming years. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.